So Carver Steakhouse was just voted the best steakhouse for this year in Las Vegas. In this video, I'm gonna go over everything from the menu to the food, to the layout, to the ambiance. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna let you know where I think it ranks among the heavy hitters of steakhouses in Las Vegas. Carver Steak is located in the district area of Resorts World. Uh, the district area is where you're gonna find all of the high-end venues located on the property. So all the high-end restaurants and all the high-end nightlife and entertainment, that is gonna be in the district. When you get to the end of the district, you finally see it. It has this gorgeous and opulent white marble facade. And then it has some really cool gold decor and gold pinstriping. It really gives off a modern yet classical steakhouse vibe from the outside. The entrance in the Carver Steak is one of the best experiences you're gonna get from your meal. Uh, when I walked in, I could not believe how modern and cool, yet sophisticated and classy the lounge area is. That's the first thing you enter, and it is the epitome of modern luxury. The lighting is perfect. It's dark, but not too dark, and it's the accent lighting that really makes it. From the cool illuminated artwork to the LED panels on the back of the bar, to the lights suspended above the bar and located underneath, it is probably the coolest lounge and bar at any steakhouse I've ever been to in Las Vegas. If the lounge and bar area was just the entire restaurant, I would be more than happy, but it's not. It's just a casual place to kind of have a more approachable dinner. If you do want to do a formal setting, the dining room is in the back. It's really what you would expect from a modern luxury steakhouse. It has gold ceilings, it has horseshoe booths, there's traditional sitting in the middle. I got a whimsical yet very refined feel from it. I got a little bit, just a little bit, of the same type of vibe I get at SW Steakhouse. Okay, let's dive into this meal. I sit down at the bar and I have my pick of seat because there aren't that many people there. I got there right when they opened and I asked for the cocktail list and I also asked what their signature drink was, what their coolest drink was, what their best drink was and the answer all came back with the one drink, the Kentucky Swagger. Carver Steak has their own selection of Maker's Mark. That's what makes this drink so distinct. The drink really wasn't that beautiful or aesthetically pleasing. You're not gonna find those wild, experiential novelty cocktails here at Carver Steak. It was delicious, and the coolest thing about it was the glassware with that gold perimeter rim. Appetizer number one, the Wagyu cheesesteak bites. Now this is an interesting and unique and creative appetizer. This is something that you're rarely gonna see at any other steakhouse. I like the fact that they take some chances on the menu and offer some things that are different. You know, this was just like a cheesesteak. It had caramelized onions, it had provolone mornay. This thing was a carb explosion. It was about 80% carbs. Those buttered Parker rolls were so gigantic. I was hoping that it would have a bit more protein in it, kind of a larger serving of Wagyu. But for $24, I thought the appetizer was reasonably priced. Appetizer number two, the yellowtail sashimi. This is one of the most beautiful dishes I've had during my entire trip here at Resorts World. This dish is plated beautifully on black and the presentation and the colors and the arrangement is out of this world. The ingredients on this dish were pretty much perfect. Avocado, serrano chili, and a ginger lime ponzu. The bartender told me that this was their very best appetizer and I agree. This is runner up for dish of the night. Appetizer number three is the jumbo prawn cocktail, and these were jumbo. Now, this was a dish that I didn't really want. I really forced it. You know, when I get to these steakhouses, I usually try to get either the shrimp cocktail, uh, a tartare, or oysters every single time. So I kind of forced myself into getting this one, and believe me, this could have almost been a meal ender. These shrimps were gigantic. They were U12s, which means there are 12 in a pound. These things were unbelievable in size. The presentation was pretty standard, just served on a bowl of ice. I do like it when they interlock and intermingle the shrimps like that. I think that's a really cool experience when you try to unlock them. One thing that I really liked about this dish specifically is that they came out with two cocktail sauces. One was a Dijonet and one was a horseradish cocktail sauce. The horseradish definitely gave it a little bit of kick, which I loved. Now it's time to gather myself. I definitely forced that last appetizer. I need to take a break a little bit. I'm gonna order a cocktail and plot my next move. I looked through the cocktail list and I saw a cocktail that I don't think I've ever seen at any other steakhouse before, and that is a Singapore Sling. Now you might find a Singapore Sling at an all-inclusive restaurant, maybe in Cancun or Punta Cana, but I can't remember the last time I was at a classy and refined top steakhouse and saw a Singapore Sling on the menu. The Singapore Sling is one of my favorite drinks of all time. They're so refreshing. I actually find like the ingredients of the cocktail a great way to kind of cleanse your palate as well. I loved everything about this cocktail, from its deep red color, to its cool garnishes, to its delicious taste. 
So I'm sipping on my Singapore sling. I'm taking my time. I'm waiting for my appetite to come back a little bit, which it is, thank God. I went with the domestic Wagyu, the rib cap for 88, just because it's so rare. For you steak aficionados, you know there's only one rib cap per cow. And when I had this at John George's over at Aria, it was one of the best pieces of meat I've ever had in my entire life. So I'm waiting for my rib cap and now I'm really excited. My hunger is coming back a little bit and I'm really interested to see how this piece of meat is gonna be. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be amazing. Snake River Farms is the brand of beef and every single piece of meat I've ever had from them has been beyond delicious. Even their frozen steaks, which you can order online, are remarkable. Just before my steak hits my eyesight, the bartender approaches and he has this beautiful wooden box in front of him. He opens it up and this is something that I have only experienced twice in the last three years out of all the steakhouses I've eaten at all over the world. And that is choose your own steak knife. Now it sounds like something that is just kind of trivial and not that important, but trust me, if you're a steak person, this is a really big deal and it's such a cool experience. You can see on the inside of the top cover of the box, it says choose your weapon. I think that's such a cool little touch. And then there are five different styles of steak knives all with different types of lengths and serrations and steel styles. I think I chose the best steak knife out of all of them. I chose the Damascus steak knife. Does it get any cooler and classier and more powerful than a Damascus steak knife? I don't think so. So here it is, the piece de la resistance, the eight ounce rib cap from Snake River Farms. Now it doesn't look like much. It just looks like a little piece of meat, but trust me, the, the reason it's plated like that is because it's all about the steak. That's the only thing you need to think about is the piece of meat in front of you. And let me tell you something, this was perhaps the juiciest, most tender, softest, sponge-like steak I've ever had in my life. Just from its outside appearance of its texture and its colors and the way the light was kind of shining off it, I could just tell that this was gonna be one of the best steaks I've had in a long time. You can see it has some finishing salt on there just a little bit. I think that's a nice little touch. I actually like that a lot. And then when I cut it open, it is cooked to perfection. For those of you that don't know, the rib cap is going to be leaner, notably leaner than a traditional ribeye. It's almost a combination of a filet and a ribeye where you get the tenderness of a filet, but the flavor profile of a ribeye. So Carver Steak, is it the best steakhouse in Las Vegas? I think it's one of the best. I think it's right up there with the hyper elite steakhouses. I don't know if I would call it the very top one, the best of the best, but it's right up there. Carver Steak is absolutely a top 10 steakhouse in Las Vegas, and it's probably even better than that. To me, it was a bit of a blend between SW and John George's. It had a lot of similar menu items that you're gonna find at John George's, and it had kinda of some similar vibes that you're gonna get at SW. It is definitely, definitely one of the top places to eat here at Resorts World, and I think it's one of the best places to eat overall on this end of the strip.